I'm Tim Hanstead. I'm the CEO of Landessa. We're happy to be here tonight. I'm here with my colleague, Melanie, who co-leads Landessa's Girls Project with a team based in India. So Susan grew up in Louisiana. I grew up in farm country. I was the, or still am, the grandson of Norwegian immigrant farmers who left their country because they lacked land and opportunity. And while I was young, I worked in the fields alongside Mexican migrant farm workers. And they also shared stories with me about how they left their homeland because they lacked land and opportunity. So I began seeing a pattern here. And the pattern is that there are talented and hardworking people all over the world, but they don't all have opportunity. And it was that injustice that led me on a path that took me to law school where I committed to work on issues of global poverty. And that path took me back to the issue of land. So why land? Because land and land rights issues are at the root of global extreme poverty. You see, three quarters of the world's poorest people live in rural areas where owning land means opportunity, where land is the most important source of not only nutrition and income, but credit, wealth, power, and, and status. So it's no surprise that, three, that most of the world's poor share three traits. They live in agrarian societies, they rely on land to survive, and they lack legal control over that land. And that means they are vulnerable, they lack security, they lack the incentive to make the long-term improvements to increase their, their harvests and their income. They can't plan year to year. Their horizon really is scraping by day to day. And women fare the worst. So even women rarely own land. And even when their husbands have legal rights to land. And that leaves women vulnerable, lacking economic assets, lacking power, lacking voice. So this all sounds pretty depressing, but there are solutions. Landessa's model is to partner with governments to design and help implement land-related laws, policies, and programs that strengthen land rights for women and for men. And partnering with governments gives us leverage because just one of those laws or programs that we can help design and implement can transform the lives of thousands of people, e even millions. And in fact, over the years, Landessa has partnered with governments in more than 50 countries on reforms that have provided secure legal rights to land to more than 110 million women and men. And, that, and the cost of that has been about 70 cents per family benefited. So what happens when these poor people get land rights? They get opportunity. There's a multitude of studies that show that food production goes up, income, wealth increases, they get access to credit, to government services, and perhaps most importantly, they gain a stake in society, they gain hope. Now, we know that land rights are at the root of extreme poverty. It's not just enough for men to get those land rights. It's very important that women get them too. And when women share in those land rights, even more good things happen. Food production and income goes up even more. Uh, more of the family's income gets devoted to children's education and nutrition. Women get voice in the household and in the community. And we've learned over the years that it's not enough just to focus on, on women as adults. It's actually best to start with girls. And the project we're highlighting tonight does just that. It starts with girls to achieve these ends. And my colleague Melanie will tell you about it. Great. Thanks, Tim. Hi, everyone. I want to just start by re-emphasizing one 
especially transformative piece of information that Tim shared, and it's this. It's that if we're going to address poverty in a sustainable way, there's two things that we know we have to do. Strengthen land rights and empower women and girls. And the Girls Project does this. It was designed with a question in mind that we always ask at Landessa, which is how can we make change that's not just impactful, but is impactful on a large scale? And the answer for the Girls Project is that we partner with the government of West Bengal and we integrate land rights and land-based livelihoods components into the government's own girls empowerment program. And this does a couple things. One is that in the short term, it helps tackle some of the things that amplify poverty for girls, things like poor nutrition, having to drop out of school, and facing early marriage. And another thing it does is focused more in the long term, and that's getting girls on their feet and helping set them up and position them to have land rights later when they're women. And we have a short video that shows what this looks like for one girl in the program. Her name is Monica. আমাদের সমাজে মর্যাদা এবং সম্মান বাড়ে উত্তর অধিকার সূত্রে আমরা সেই জমি সমান ভাগ পাবো আমার বাবা মা কিন্তু চেষ্টা করে বিয়ে দেওয়ার চেষ্টা করে কেননা পরবর্তী যদি ভালো না পায় মুখ ফুটে কথা বলবি ভালো যেটা সেটা বলবি বাবাকে উচিত কথা বলা যায় কত টাকা হবে তাহলে লাউটিয়া তাও When I watch Monica, I see determination and excitement and big plans, and I always see this in all of the, the girls in the program. It's in all of their faces. Uh, but as bright as they are, they are conspired against by poverty and custom. So for example, custom usually says that the parents of a bride have to pay a substantial dowry to the parents of a groom. And another custom is that the older the bride, the higher the dowry price. So this actually makes an incentive, especially for very poor families, to marry their daughters young, 15, 16, sometimes younger, young enough to lose out on education and become a teen mom. And this weight of dowry that girls carry helps create a perception that they're a burden and that they're not worth investing in. So what's the result of this? Well, for example, in very poor areas where food is scarce, girls often eat last and least in their families. They're the first to be pulled out of school when money is tight, and, and this is critical, they don't inherit land. Girls inherit poverty, not property, even though they have the same rights to inherit as their brothers do. And the consequences of this are devastating, and not only for the girls. So if you just look at the implications related to education, for example, an educated girl is twice as likely to educate her own children, 50% more likely to immunize her children, and just one additional year of secondary school means her future wages will be 15 to 25% higher. 
There's one girl in particular in the film who I think about constantly, and it's the one who was upset during the group lesson. And she said, it's not right. People never think to help their daughters stand on their own two feet. And she knows that girls in West Bengal do not have to be child brides and that they do not have to be a part of this cycle of poverty. And in fact, they're a part of the solution. And this is exactly what the Girls Project is about. And it works in two ways. One is focused on the short term, and it's, it looks like what you would call gardening. That's what it is. On a small piece of family land, girls learn land-based livelihood skills, and they grow things, and they produce vegetables that they can take to market and sell for income, or that they can add to the family table. And one thing this does is that it, it helps lessen the pressure, the financial pressure on a family, and just create a space where they can start saying no to marriage and yes to school. And it also changes the girl's footing in a family and tips the, the perception of her from a burden to an asset. The second way this works is, is more focused on the long term. And you heard Tim talk about some of the benefits that accrue when women, in particular, have land rights. So the rest of our work is focused on how do we set girls on that path, get them on their feet, and position them for that. And what this looks like is making sure that they understand and are even exposed to in person to some of the offices and institutions that they need to access to exercise their rights later. We've seen these effects with more than 40,000 girls through pilots. And right now, we have an incredible moment of opportunity where the government of West Bengal is rolling out its girls empowerment program across the state. And it's invited Landessa to incorporate these land rights components and land-based livelihoods components into that program. This means over the next three years, we can reach up to 1.4 million girls like Monica. With your support, we can do it. Thank you. OK. Yes. You would, sorry. Sure, that's a, a great question. Um, the Girls Project really is all about that. Uh, the, the fact is women do have the right to own land in India, and girls have the right to inherit. And so it's ac exactly this kind of mindset uh, and practice and custom that we're having to get at. So I think working with the girls, uh, they start to see themselves differently. They're doing different activities that change how their families perceive them. And one thing we weren't able to mention is that other components of the project focus on working with boys and working with community members to, to help uh, connect them to these ideas as well and create that change. Just very quickly, so changing laws and policies is important. I mean, it's, it's often necessary, never sufficient. And so, as, as Melanie says, taking this further is really important. We often think if you're going to change the world, you have to change the rules, but you have to make sure those rules get embedded as well. Thank you very much.